next speaker is a uh, colleague of yours um, in the field of microbiology, the School of Pharmacy, University of Oslo, uh, Dr. Anna Bith Kolstø. Um, she has worked on uh, microbiological bio dynamics and evolution using the earth bacteria in the Bacillus serious group, a bacterial group that includes Bacillus anthracis. Dr. Kolstø is a member of the Norwegian Academy of Science and Letters. Please. First, I have a short take-home message, and that is we have to be careful so we don't lose the molecular microbiologists, the next generation that we really need. So, I am then uh, at the University of Oslo, the School of Pharmacy, and I am a microbiologist there, and I have for the last uh, 20 years or so, been particularly interested in uh, the relationship, the close relationship of Bacillus and traces and other bacteria. And as you know, Bacillus and traces is uh, a bioterrorist weapon, so to speak. But these, the closest relatives to Bacillus and traces, that is one, Bacillus thuringiensis, which is the most widely used biopesticide in the world, and it is spread by tons in various parts of the world. So, as humans, we regard this as very useful bacterium. And the other one is Bacillus cereus, which is then uh, something that uh, might be toxic. It is uh, uh, known as a polluter in hospitals and also in uh, uh, dairies. And it uh, often causes uh, food poisoning, usually not so serious, but sometimes more, more serious. So I've been interested in really what are the differences between these three species that are so closely related. And it turns out that uh, sometimes uh, the differences are not so big, and it's much closer than we like to think of. And sometimes the differences between the Bacillus and traces and the Bacillus thuringiensis or serious are very close. And uh, the thuringiensis could be much closer, actually, to the Bacillus and traces. So this is something uh, that uh, I do not write about in the press or really share uh, that much. But I think that these kind of questions is important. It is important for the, uh, at the universities. It is important in a way in a teaching situation. Being a university professor, one of my uh, main tasks is to teach the students and which I find very interesting and challenging. And what I really like to do is to try to make the students understand the life of the microorganisms, of the bacteria, and really how they are uh, kind of looking upon their uh, possibilities in their life. And they have a lot of tools to uh, ad adapt and adjust to the surroundings. This is important also uh, because I teach pharmacy students, and the pharmacy students and the pharmacy studies, they, they, uh, uh, the uh, bacteria are usually the enemies. So we have to get rid of them, we have to fight them. And in order to fight the enemies, you have to know the enemy. So I think this deeper knowledge is something that the students need. They need to know how the bacteria really adapt. They need to know that the bacteria, they uh, act as a community. They have, uh, uh, you have mutations that go on in their DNA constantly, not to a high rate, but they do go on. And whenever there is a bacterium, that gets a mutation so that it adapts and 
uh, can adjust to the surroundings, well, this will be the winner. We may not see that this happens, but the understanding of this, I think, is very important that the next generation shall uh, be aware of. So uh, I think that, for instance, it is important also that the students should realize that in spite of all the sequencing that have been done of uh, eukaryotic cells, of humans, animals, and all the thousands of bacteria that we have, in spite of that we know all the sequence, still there is about 20% of the genes that we don't know the function of in the simplest most well-known bacterium, like uh, E. coli. So this is something also to keep in mind. We don't really talk about it and discuss it, but these are important knowledge. And it's this kind of awareness that I think is important that we as a university and teachers and so on really bring into the students' awareness. I think that... Uh, this kind of awareness is important, perhaps, for uh, the stimulation of the students when it comes to their creativity and their work and what we need for the next generation and what we need to prepare for the fight against uh, bioterrorism. We need their knowledge and interest. Of course, there is a dual uh, in, in most, maybe all, uh, biology uh, tools that is developed and all the studies. There is a dual situation that you have, we talk about the bad things that uh, biotechnology can be used for, but you also have all the good ones. And I think that often that is really what we first push, is the possibilities and so on. And I think this is important that the students uh, also get this feeling. But at the same time, of course, we have to be aware of uh, and think of uh, the consequences that may also be there. At the University of Oslo and other universities, of course, we, we, I think that people in my position, being a group leader and having research activities, you, we get uh, letters, mails from people from other countries. They want to come and work and visit and so on, and students. And we like that. But at the same time, we are responsible for this awareness of the people that we bring into the lab. We don't necessarily work with toxic uh, bacteria or so on, but still, we have this kind of awareness. And I think it is important that or we have a special responsibility for kind of reacting and seeing when something uh, is suspect or is kind of suspicious in the lab. So that uh, I don't mean that we should really be very suspicious, but we have to we have to keep an eye of what is going on. And it may not. I mean, uh, the universities are quite open and relaxed in a way. But I think it is important that you know that uh, there is a system within the university. And we know that we should and can react and that the message will go up in line to the responsible person. They have uh, the contacts within the uh, PST, the police, and so on. So there is really a kind of security net. I will just end there, I think, and then just say that uh, um, I hope that uh, we can contribute to this awareness of uh, being prepared, but we have to be also at the same time thinking of the positiveness and do not lose this kind of strength and possibility. Thank you.